Hi guys. It is actually a pleasant and rather warm fall of 2022 night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Thursday night. That would be November 10th, 2022 or something like that. So anyway, the little dog and I are trying to seal up this tiny house before old man winter gets here in a few days. So I am just now getting around to figuring out, uh, you know, what to rant about tonight and what chronicle of the collapse and, you know, going through all of this stuff, thinking about doing some oilprice.com roundup, you know, because I'm avoiding the mm, 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 and uh, making my life a little tough. You know, I'm thinking about doing the oilprice.com and then I, uh, Fat Boy sent me the link to some new book by some fellow I can't remember. Anyway, I'm going to come back to that on for my Sunday Doomsday Sermon and then Dave Gardner over at Growth Busters uh, you know, talking about we're supposed to hit 8 billion people on Tuesday. So I think uh, maybe I will save Dave till Tuesday. But anyway, guys, you know, going through 100 stories in the mainstream media, you know, with all these various dog and pony shows and hopium and stuff, and then I go on the comments on my own channel, and I and I know you guys are sick of hearing this, but uh, y y you know, all joking aside, whoever this dude is, Andy the Gardener, lives over there in Zombie Island, otherwise known as England, I believe. Uh, whoever this guy is, I've never spoken to this man. I've been trying to get him to come on the show for an interview for years. He's like a little greased pig trying to pin down. I mean, the man, he has his own YouTube channel. Andy has his own YouTube channel. But, you know, I mean, it's fine, but it's a little bit weird. Here is this man. This dude understands as well as anybody I have ever met what is going down on this planet. Okay, uh, I, 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 it makes no sense to me why Andy the gardener is not, you know, why he isn't a, a household name, at least here in the Doomosphere. Uh, and, and he comes on time and time again with, the, with these brilliant comments, you know, articulating uh, in, in a few sentences and paragraphs what a lot of these bloviating blow bags, uh, you know, wind bags, you know, with all of their big 50 cent words and shit, you know, uh, go on droning on for hours. Andy the gardener can zero in on whatever the uh, topic is about uh, collapse uh, and just get right to the heart of the matter. And then, you know, he'll have like one thumbs up or whatever. So now, Andy, I think that he's, I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing, you know, being, you know, because I am bipolar. I'm sure you guys have figured out that I am bipolar. So with Andy, you know, for weeks or months, I won't hear a comment from him. And then he gets very verbose, you know, I assume when he gets manic. So uh, I love it when Andy and I are both manic. Uh, if you can't figure this out, I have been manic for six months. And uh, so Andy, the gardener, and I are both manic. And uh, so once again... <laughs> We're going to let, and we're going to head into the Collapse Chronicles mailbag and let Andy the Gardener explain it to you because he can obviously do a much better job than I can. Uh, you know, I have to admit I'm a little bit jealous of the dude, uh, but, but hey, 
uh, if he wants to to share his great wisdom here, I will try to bring it to an audience of four or five people instead of the one or two people who read his long comments. So anyway, this is I'm going to do a I guess a mashup between two comments from my rant last night by that fellow John Stossel, uh, where he was quoted, and you're talking about the electric car revolution is just dumb. It won't happen. It's magical thinking is what uh, John Stossel had to say. Um, So this is, as I, I'm going to mash up I, two, two comments into one. So take it away, Andy the Gardener, and tell us, let's get the Andy the Gardener interpretation of electric vehicles and the, you know, the whole bullshit renewable energy revolution and what it's all about for those of you failing to understand uh, what electric vehicles and the renewable energy revolution are about. If John Stossel did not make it clear, uh, we're going to let Andy the gardener uh, educate you here. All right. Just going by the title, you know, the electric car revolution is just dumb. It won't happen. It's magical thinking. Just going by the title which starts out well, but then immediately goes face palmy. The problem with e-cars is nothing to do with them not being possible. I will listen to the video, but I'm not expecting much. Hopefully, Mr. H, Mr. H, uh, I think that uh, I'm not sure who Mr. H is. But anyway, Mr. H will fill in the logic gaps. Okay, I'm three minutes in now. If Stossel is a Trumper, it does not bode well. Rednecks don't like e-cars because men drive cars with V8s. And only Guardian readers and girls drive e-cars. Andy's Law number 14. Conservatards are right about things sometimes, but always for the wrong reasons. Okay, I just listened, and it, you know, John Stossel's point about uh, the myth of the e car revolution, and it was actually pretty sound. But, he is still simplistically accepting the notion that e-cars are a lot better, I'm sorry, a bit better, a bit better in terms of actual usage. This is not true. E-cars are heavier. There are energy losses in the system between the coal-fired power station, the plethora of cables and junctions and charger batteries, etc., and you have to build very expensive infrastructure like wind turbines on top, all out of fossil fuels, which are themselves energy sinks and could never replace themselves, let alone run anything else. Wind turbines are especially non-renewable. The entire concept of renewable energy replacing any fossil fuels at all or being a solution to anything except creating more growth from fossil fuels is ridiculous. Thus, I would argue e-cars end up burning more fossil fuels 
than ordinary ones in usage too. This is predictable. Human systems tend towards ever greater and more insane complexity and if energy consumption as they evolve and transition through life stages and ultimately senility and death, you know, death being the current stage, the ECAR and so-called renewable energy is simply a manifestation of that process. It ticks all the mindless growth boxes, plus promises eco-salvation to its billions of building blocks, which is why the mega cancer is going down this route. It's fucking perfect from mega cancers consume everything before dying off perspective. You know, Andy, every once in a while uses the F-bomb, but he's very judicious in his F-bomb usage. I think there's, uh, might be one more F-bomb uh, in the second half of his commentary. So we're going to go from e-cars and renewable energy to the larger picture of industrial civilization. Take it away, Andy the Gardener. Industrial civilization is having to shunt ever more energy back into the energy sector, triaging off, starving the body of the economy in its attempts to get more energy. I think of the economy as a gigantic organism at the end of winter. The same rules and logic applies, but there will be no spring, only more winter. The analogy breaks down, ha ha, there will be no salvation for the starving buffalo. The cost of living crisis is actually catabolic collapse. Things will get worse before they get even worse. But it's nothing new. We were on this downward spiral since 2006 which is when Andy says we hit peak oil in 2006. Uh, I'm not going to argue with Andy the gardener about whether or not we hit peak oil in 2006 or not, but according to his reading of the tea, tea leaves, we were on the, the downward spiral since 2006. It annoys people when I say it's a reason to rejoice at last. The end is in sight, and everyone, not just us early adapters, can see it. At last, I feel a connection with my fellow humans as we all stare blindly into the abyss. Although I do feel superior and am superior, as I saw things coming 45 years ago, Andy is, I think, 52 years old, so when he was seven, he started warning everyone about this, and made all the necessary sacrifices while, I'm going to get to this in a minute, and made all the necessary sacrifices while everyone else was living the high life and denying any problem and mostly still are, to be honest. And if they do recognize that they are fucked, their only response is self-pity and sadness. The party cannot continue rather than any remorse 
and guilt at what they have done. Yes, it response is self-pity and sadness that the party cannot continue rather than any remorse and guilt at what they have done. So, uh, you know, when Andy uh, brags uh, about being superior, I will say, uh, you know, at the bottom of all of this man's comments, Andy the gardener, and maybe someone else can, can step up to the plate. Andy the gardener, as far as I know, is the only one of my listeners who, you know, who has the trifecta of saving the planet. Andy the gardener does not own a car. Well, I guess it says there's such thing as a quadrifecta. So Andy the gardener does not drive a fossil fuel powered car and he and he does not fly. He does not drive a car or fly in airplanes. The man is a vegan, a, a, a vegan and I will say in the 10 years or so I have known this man, he has never once uh, although he might argue this, he has never once made some self-righteous comment or, you, you know, uh, calling me or whatever because I eat meat. Uh, he, he is a vegan, uh, does not eat his fellow earthlings, and of course, the big one, uh, and the only one I share with him, Andy the Gardener, is not a breeder. And Andy realizes the fact that he is not a breeder, it takes the fact that he is a vegan who uh, does not own a car and does not fly, and uh, you take all of those and multiply them times 500, and they do not equal his uh, lifestyle choice uh, not to breed. Uh, but I can only imagine Andy the gardener would have made an interesting father to some, uh, to some young child. Anyway, keep them coming, Andy the gardener, and once again, the, the, uh, invitation to, uh, be interviewed here at uh, Collapse Chronicles is an open one as it has been ever since I started this channel. But it sounds like I need to freshen my drink and go finish eating the, my fellow earthlings that I started at lunch today. Get out there and enjoy your fellow earthlings while you still can because we aren't going to have fellow earthlings for much longer to enjoy. Bye guys.